Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, weathermodificationhistory.com, and climateviewer.org. It's finally here, the brand new version of Climate Viewer 3D. I've been working three months on this thing. I can't wait to show it off. Um, as many of you know, her, uh, Tropical Storm Florence is uh, building in the Atlantic right now, and it's headed directly my way. So I know that I will be tracking these uh, <laughs> nasty storms, uh, hoping that they uh, make their way north. But as it looks right now, um, center bullseye. Went through Hurricane Hugo back in 1989, one of the nastiest hurricanes to ever hit this country. And it was an experience of a lifetime, not looking forward to a hurricane. But regardless, I'll be watching it very closely on Climate Viewer 3D. Um, for those who don't have 3D support on your video card or on your device, there is Climate Viewer Mobile. It is available at climateviewer.org slash mobile. Um, and it's also on the new menu bar. So all you got to do is come over to climateviewer.org. Up here at the top, you got a new menu bar, um, full screen maps. 3D is here, which we're viewing right now. And the mobile version is right here. It is pretty much identical. Um, you can see it's right here. It looks exactly the same. has the same little buttons and everything like that. Um, and we'll get into how all this works. I'm going to explain it all in this video. So we're, um, we're over here on climateviewer.org. And when you first load it up, it's not going to look like this. I've already loaded up the hurricane tracker from GDAX and the IMERG satellite rain rate. And what we can see is right out here is Tropical Storm Florence, and there's all the rain associated with it. Now, um, this image I'm showing right now is from September 6th. Let's see if they've got an image from September 7th up yet. They do not. So when you pull up the NASA satellites, it's going to start on yesterday's image because it usually takes them a couple hours to get all of that together. Um, but regardless, uh, you know, that's what we're looking at. So yesterday, this is what we were looking at. Um, that's a massive amount of rainfall. And it does look like it's headed right here. Center point. I'm right here in Sumter, South Carolina. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's hope that it doesn't come my way. But regardless, I have many different tools on climateviewer.org that will allow you to track all of this live. And I'm going to show you how this works. So for starters, I'm going to hit the trash can up here at the top. And we're going to reset this back to the way you start. So when you first come to the map, and let me just refresh the page. So when you first come to the map, it's going to have the satellite view up. And there's going to be one flashing button up here that says map list. Very simple stuff. Tried to simplify it as much as possible. What up, Corey? What up, Ronald? Welcome to everybody in chat. Appreciate you guys hanging out late with me. Um, click your map list right here. That's going to bring up the active maps window. Before, it was kind of overwhelming. There were 750 maps, and there was a lot to go through. And I wanted to simplify this. So now when you add maps, it only shows the maps that are currently available um, that are activated. So when you click add maps, it's going to bring up a map window. And as you can see, this is showing currently 517 maps. I still got about 200 more maps to add to this bad boy. But I wanted to go ahead and get it out there because I'm dying to show this thing off. Um, and you know, these are all just text links that each one has load map or description. So if you were to click say like air quality now and you hit load map, that's going to bring it up on the screen and you can actually see the air quality and you can see down here, we got some red ones. You click that and it's going to say tomorrow's forecast unhealthy for ozone 174, um, this one says unhealthy, you know, green says good, 
Um, so that's the example on that. Now it's got an information icon right here. If you click that, it's going to take you to a new window and each and every single map now has its own individual page. And as you can see, now we're at climateviewer.org slash alerts and weather slash air quality slash maps slash US EPA air quality index tomorrow. Um, and on that page, it has a description of what the map is, um, who it's attributed to. Let's blow this up a little bit so you guys can see it better. The type of map it is, it's a Google Earth KML file, where I got the file from, files.airnowtech.org. Um, you can actually download that if you wanted to and, you know, save it for your, you know, Google Earth and more info on airnow.gov. And that'll take you to the website where I got it from. Um, and of course, the usual sidebar stuff like weather modification history. You got sharing buttons down here. We got comments so you can leave comments on individual maps. Um, that's also brand new. Um, you know, all of the different versions. So Climate Viewer 3D, Climate Viewer Mobile, Climate Viewer News, and Climate Viewer TV, my YouTube channel. And then related maps. So these are the other maps that are in that category. So you can see here's the air quality index current. Um, the projection for today and yesterday. So if I already hit current, that would take me to what it currently is right now. Um, and as you can see, this is a 3D map. Each one you can click on base maps. It'll show you, you can switch to the black background like I was showing earlier if you like. But you can also switch to 2D map right there on the same page by clicking here. And that'll bring up the 2D version mobile version of the map and it's still you know flat map for you flat earthers out there um but regardless you can flip back and forth between the two so back to 3d and we're all golden that was a a feat in and of itself pulling that off i'm very proud of that feature um so let's go back to the main map and uh let's let's dig into this some more all right so I click add maps um, the same thing right here description will take you to the individual map pages each one of these has one clicking load map or just clicking on the text itself will bring up the map on uh, the current app you're on if you click on a category like alerts and weather and then you click on say hurricane and tropical storms now you're going to get a map preview so it actually shows you what each of these maps looks like um making 517 images also quite a feat that's why i've been so busy for the last three months so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to turn on all of these because before i was showing you the gdax one right here so these are all from uh nowcoast.noaa.gov and we can see their version of the track similar um deal here let me get rid of the air quality stuff and each one of these has a little slider icon on it. If you click on, like say, where's the cone of uncertainty? And I do this, I can actually make that transparent, as you can see there. And I can do, turn that up and do this. And I can do that, make it black or white or whatever. Um, and you can go through and individually screw with each one of these. So this is Tropical Storm Florence, which will certainly be a hurricane. Right now they've got it at a category two and I believe that says four. My God, it's already changed. It was three earlier today. So they've got it at a category four hurricane, possibly 140 knots gusts, um, 115 knots sustained um, as it makes its way to South Carolina. Not looking forward to that. I hope it does turn, but regardless, um, that's a great way to keep up with it. So. I have two different sources of hurricane tracking currently available on Climate Viewer 3D. Um, again, same deal here. Click base maps. You can change it to anything you like, like the ocean floor um, background. To minimize this, click the minimize button right here. And that brings you back to where you can just look at it in full screen. There's a full screen button right here in the bottom corner. Or you can just hit F11 on your browser, but regardless, makes it full screen. Um, and you can see all the different hurricanes going on currently. 
for some reason it's not showing the Japanese ones, the GDAX one does. But regardless, back to the map list, let's close this out. I'm gonna just destroy them all by hitting the trash icon at the top. And let's show off a different section. Um, click add maps, come back up here. What do we got? We got air quality. We've got climate viewer reports. If you guys haven't put your own report in, this is where they show up. Um, this is from our reporting app. The reporting app is available right here. External links, submit report or view reports. Um, I suggest you guys try that out. The chat rooms here, weather mod history, climate viewer news, get a VPN, uh, donate on Patreon, PayPal, or GoFundMe. All of this is free of charge, always will be um about this map and the site map i'm gonna show you guys the site map real quick because i just want to get off topic for a second and the site map actually shows you everything on the website all the new stuff so climate viewer 3d this is an extended version of what we were looking at just a second ago you got the hurricane tracker the imerg the nasa satellite and all the nuclear reactors of the world simultaneously we'll recreate that in just a second uh, my reading map by George Stiller about climate viewer and then all the different sections as you can see if you click on any one of these sections like say pollution and privacy it'll show you atmospheric sensors and EMF sites like harp ionospheric heaters worldwide missile defense radars Star Wars space fence the Russian woodpecker and the list goes on um climate change and energy coal-fired power plants fracking wells um geoengineering and weather modification all the NOAA reports from 2004 to 2012 cloud seeding generators all over america chinese cloud seeding generators government and surveillance De department of homeland security fusion centers the five eyes stone ghost surveillance network um the list goes on and on and on um pretty freaking awesome stuff i'm super stoked about the new map um you guys are gonna love it give it a try it's very easy to use so back to the main map let's go into it um what else we have earthquake tracking we've got um several different sources for this one um, we got the CSEM EMSC, that's the European version of the earthquake tracking. I'm just going to go ahead and load that up. And we'll compare that with, um, let's say, uh, two, that's last month, last week. Let's go 2.5 plus today. And we'll turn that on. All right, so let's see what we got. And let's make the background black because it's easier to see and boom all right so these orange ones are the usgs and these are from today and i think that the csem is from all last week and you know they showed the fracking earthquakes over here in oklahoma and um, nebraska and stuff um and the ones around the new madrid all of these down here in mexico none of these are showing up on the usgs feed as you can clearly see um, that Earthquake 3D app that's so popular, it tends to feed off of just the USGS feed. Um, and it doesn't really show the big picture. Let's see if we can try to get some more of those to show up. So I'll just do, uh, let's go 2.5 plus last month and see what happens. This is a really big file also. All right, so now we're starting to line up a little better, but still big difference in what the United States Geological Society reports and what the European Union's uh, earthquake monitor looks like, as you can see. So I rely on multiple different sources for getting this information. Um, wow, that's a lot of earthquakes around Puerto Rico. Holy crap. Um, but as you can see, world's covered in earthquakes. You can track them all in 3D. Click on any one of them, it'll show you. Um, here's the information. Click here for more information, take you to the USGS site for that actual earthquake. All of this information is live. As I stated it earlier, if you see in the top corner here where it says live, 
all three of these categories, alerts and weather, NASA Gibbs satellites, and other satellites are live data, meaning when you click them, they are downloaded from government and university locations um, around the world and displayed in real time. So they change every single day. Many of them change every five minutes. So you... Um, you, you really can't get a better spot for monitoring all this same time. So as you can see, these are all my earthquake sources. Um, you even got tectonic plates, two different sources of that, the USGS version, and uh, my boy George Stiller from My Reading Mapped. He has a version. You can click that one, turn it on, and you can see all of the different tectonic plates. Give that a second to load up. Let me turn off this USGS crap because it's in my face um, and minimize that. And you can see these are where the tectonic plate lines are. That's why you're going to see a lot of earthquakes along those lines. Um, and that's where the basically the continents all line up. All right, so that's it for earthquakes. Let's clear that out and go back up here and scroll to the top. And let's look at fires and volcanoes current volcanic activity this week i like that that sounds fun um fire detection fire detection for modus firms is currently disabled for some reason they said they've got a note on their website saying that they've had a lot of people trying to access this map recently so temporarily these are disabled they will be back um but you know you can still see this this and this and this let's turn all those on and give them a second to load up all right so let me global volcanoes let's turn that off for a second but basically this is from the california wildfires this is smoke detection as you can see um and it shows where the smoke plumes are the red icons are currently active volcanoes um any one of these that has this little tree icon on it if you click on that you can actually fly to any one of the individual map markers. So I go to Krakato and let's go up here to base maps and let's put on the SR aerial and then let's make it 3D terrain because this looks really cool. All right, so now we can actually look at the volcano in 3D. Um, <laughs> I have too much fun with Climate Viewer 3D. Um, it allows me to see the entire world at a glimpse in real time. That's why I built it for people like you and me who are just, you know, curious. Uh, we can't help ourselves. We've got to know uh, what the heck's going down. Apparently, the NC Web um, fire system is currently not working. Got a little flashing icon there. Have to figure out what the heck's going on with that. And that's always going to happen with these live layers. If the server is down on the other end, it may be temporarily unavailable. I cannot control that. Um, so just keep that in mind with any of the live layers. They are subject to change at any given moment. But, you know, as we can see, Kilauea, you can come over here. It'll fly you to Kilauea and let you see it in 3D. And wow, there's a big hole in the ground there now. You gotta love that. Um, all right, so that's volcanoes and fires. Uh, let's get back up here. We also have, I showed hurricanes already. We got lightning, um, dry thunderstorms, lightning density, non dry thunderstorm, critical outlook, uh, severe thunderstorm, lightning density. This one's really cool looking. Um, and we'll mix that with rain and snow. I'm going to come over here and grab uh, two different versions of the next rad. The base re reflectivity is the coolest looking one. So we'll turn that on and we'll get rid of all this other stuff. The global volcanoes that I was showing earlier, this shows every volcano in the world. So not just the active ones, it shows all of them. Um, and as you can see, there are many volcanoes. That's the ring of fire as everybody's heard it's called. But anyway, let's get rid of that and the fire and uh, the smoke detection. And let's turn it back black because it just looks easier to see in black. So now we have 
lightning, as you can see here, these are lightning strike density. And up here in America, we have the NEXRAD radar. So for those who don't know what an X-Rad radar is, you can actually come up here to the atmospheric sensor section of pollution and privacy and scroll down just a hair and let's go find the next rad. These are the next rad Doppler radar stations. So as you can see, this is where each of these, you know, come from. And whenever you see like these little lasers pointed out like that, that's coming from this station, which you can see the name of the station and everything. Old Hickory, Nashville, Tenor Tennessee. OHX is the, the next rad that's currently doing it hard um but this is the the non-filtered version of next rad this is not the next rad you see on tv um the next rad you see on tv doesn't show things like these chaff plumes coming off of the u.s navy and i'll show you the difference watch this so let's go back up here i'm going to come back to alerts weather i'm going to go to rain and snow and i'm going to turn on the other one as well and we'll just flip between the two. So let me turn off the stations. And we're going to see before and after. So this is the full screen. And this is after. This is what you get to see on television. This is what's actually there. Television. Actually there. So... This base reflectivity will show you a lot of things that you're not going to see anywhere else. Um, again, over here on the East Coast, look at that. That's Georgia. You see the lightning strikes. Um, and then I turn on the other one, and you see all the bloom, the hole in the ground where the next red is. That's the next red station right there. Just watch. See? Not a coincidence. Um, so that's how I, I monitor the weather. Um, you could do all of this yourself. It's very easy. It's very fun to play with. Basically, there's only four buttons on, you know, at, at most on each of these layers. One is to turn the visibility on and off. This is to actually remove it. Um, so if I want to remove these next red radars, I just click the little X. It gets it out of the list. This is the layer options for each one. So lightning strike density, similarly, it has, you know, opacity lets you make it invisible, transparent or fully visible, opaque brightness makes it even brighter contrast, more contrast on it and saturation makes it black and white, as you can see here, or more saturation, which means really bright, right in the middle is the way it comes to fault. So that's what these sliders do. Pretty fun stuff, fun to play with. That's how you track the weather in America using Climate Viewer 3D. Come up here, there are many different layers to choose from. We've got US River flood levels, five day forecast for rain events. So if you're to click on that, um, it'll actually show you, you know, what they're expecting rainfall wise. This is how your weatherman actually predicts the weather. They just basically use these NOAA HPC things. And they go, oh, we're expecting five inches of rain up here. As you can see there, um, right here is three inches of rain. This is a half inch of rain. And that's over the next five days. So pretty easy stuff click map list come back over here get rid of that forecast thing we're right back where we were so let's clear all that off i'm going to show a different section now come up here to i i also have for my european buddies out there you can see these two these are from um eu metsat and they cover everything from the atlantic ocean all the way to the indian ocean so that's rainfall totals via satellite um, so check those out as well. Closing that out. Um, what's next? All right, so we got the U.S. drought monitor, a whole bunch of stuff, significant flood risk, snow for in the winter time, couple satellite views down here at the bottom. Um, 
on to the next section watches and warnings if you click on this thing right here it's going to show you where the current watches and warnings are obviously there was a warning around um uh hawaii because of the hurricane um why did that not pop up having an issue right now their their server is running really slowly sometimes and you click on them this is now coast and for some reason those aren't popping up right now so they're having a problem regardless watches and warnings around the world um u.s floods uh this is a uh, wind gusts and uh things like that give that a shot all right so and then wind down here I'm going to really drastically increase this section. I've got some pretty cool stuff coming up with that. So let's go to the really cool ones right here. Um, these are everybody's favorite. You know you've seen them. You know you love them. The mimic microwave images that everybody shows with the bursts. I have now have animated versions of these up on Climate Viewer 3D as you can see here. When I brought this up, it brought up the timeline slider down here at the bottom. You can just grab this little bad boy and see it move in 3D. So that's where our hurricane is currently. Our tropical storm, which is soon to be a hurricane. And it's just rolling along. I already got this big white little splotch right here. And what I'm looking for specifically on this is I'm going to be watching this closely to see how it interacts with not only Nexrad, but I want to know if it's messing with ionospheric heaters. So I have the world's most thorough ionospheric heater map, and wouldn't you know it, there is one in Puerto Rico. Right here. Which is in the path of, it's called the William E. Gordon Arecibo Observatory Enhanced High Frequency Ionospheric Heater. This is a nice photo of it right here, as you can see. And all of this information is available at climateviewer.com slash heart. Um, but I, you know, I've been watching this one closely because A, Puerto, Puerto Rico got rocked. Um, B, this is the dome that you see from the 007 movies. And C, it is usually in the path of these hurricanes coming through. So, um, something to keep an eye on. If I see things on the microwave imagery shooting out of Arecibo, I'll be the first one to tell you about it. Got a nice little anomaly right here. Don't know what that's all about. As you can see, got a little band there that looks kind of funky. Um, but regardless, many different versions of that over here. This is under e, um, Sims Mimic. And I have um, color versions of that. This is total precipitable water that we're currently looking at. Um, this is version two of the same image. Let's turn off the other one. And let's look through that. It's more detailed. There we go. And we can get that back and forth. Tons of fun. So, new stuff on Climate Viewer 3D for you to play with. I uh, hope you guys will dig into that. And then finally, right here, where is Atlantic? Northwest Pacific. Right here, North Atlantic. This is the Dvorak, or the enhanced one. Very cool, as you can see there. All animated. So I could go through all these layers. I'm not going to do that, but basically uh, you can check out the NASA satellite section, visual, corrected reflectance, true color, and see the NASA satellite actually see the hurricane itself, which apparently has a nice little X in it. It has a date picker on it as well. Here's today's imagery for that. You can flip back to the 5th. See that? It's already got an eye building on it. Um, but regardless, NASA satellites in real time. Looks like it's broke up a little bit since then. Hopefully they destroy that thing. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Um, Alright, what's up Harry Rhodes? That's my dog. Welcome Sam. 
Appreciate you guys being here. Um, so the NASA satellite section has a whole lot of stuff on it. Wind speed, water vapor, all of this stuff is real time. The entire NASA section has a date picker that usually these images go all the way back to 2000. So you can choose through any of these temperature, um, aerosol, optical depth. Um, if you're concerned about chemtrails, this is your section. Atmospheric gases like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide. Um, lots of stuff to choose from here. Uh, brightness temperature, clouds like cloud depth. Um, this is also your chemtrail section. Cloud optical thickness. Um, any one of these, you know, you bring them up and you're going to see some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, let's see. 3.7 micron bring that up and this is what you get and there's our tropical storm and we can see how thick the clouds are on it and all of that sort of stuff of course there's also two other ones building right behind it which I'm keeping an eye on not looking forward to that either so let's say I wanted to actually share this and I go right here and I wanted to let's say the this one, let's make it partially visible. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. And it's got the NASA satellite underneath it. Let's put it on the 7th so they match up. Now they're both on the 7th. And I wanted to share that. So you can hit share screen right here. And when you do that, it's going to give you a link. And if you take that link, you can copy it and share it on you know any social media anywhere. There's also a short version of the URL. Facebook will tend to censor this really long one, um, so use the short URL. But regardless, if I take that and I open it in a new window, it's going to go ahead and load it up exactly the way you had it. So as we can see in the map list, it's already got both of the layers up, both of them set exactly the way I set them. That's the coolest feature about Climate Viewer 3D, is that I can go and I can take multiple layers... I can overlay them, I can set it up the way I want, zoom into the section I'm looking at, hit share screen, and they get me a link that allows somebody else to see exactly what I'm seeing using multiple sources. So I hope that you guys will give that a try. Um, it's only available when there's stuff on the screen. As you can see, the minute you clear it off, it disappears. So, because there's nothing to share. So, um, other satellites we've got the eu medsat lots of different cool colored images on there um these are in real time as well they're usually for the past five hours only so keep that in mind so if you were to go to natural color and turn that on what you're going to see is it's freaking nighttime over there and they're probably going to come up dark or not come up at all right now way to make an ass out of me there we go it's just running very slowly let's just pause that one for now and bring the other one up for some reason it's not showing all of it that's the natural color uh, version right there and it highlights some of the high clouds but regardless lots of different stuff to look at EU MedSat, pretty fun stuff. Um, old ass goes imagery and the US Naval Research Lab, which are worldwide maps. They cover the entire globe, as you can see here. Imagery for 90818, and this is straight from the Naval Research Lab, and it shows the entire globe. Clearing those out. Um, we've done the NASA Gibbs, we've done weather and alerts. Um, my favorite section, all the maps I made, um, atmospheric sensors and EMF sites. Um, that's where you see things like HARP, which will fly you directly to HARP. And for this section, I suggest you use a satellite. It's much cooler if you do, because then you can actually see, um, the HARP facility. 
and it's in 3d as well so you can see the mountains in the distance click on that give you pictures information on the heart facility got the little layer list the heart did assigned heart research building click on that it shows you inside the building that's the engines that run the thing little vhf radar um, you could fly yourself up to poker flat research range where they launched the rockets um, for HARP, which has the poker flat ISR, um, incoherent scatter radar, a PFISR. Um, you can zoom in on that and see it. It's a, this is what a baby HARP looks like. Um, right next to it's the imaging rheometer. Lots of photos on that. Let me blow it up so you guys can really see it. And you can see their laser facility here which is where they shoot the lasers up at the ionospheric mirrors they're making and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, the VLF buoy they've got down in the middle of the ocean from the HARP one hop experiment. There's the buoy. Uh, it's down here near um, New Zealand. Zooming out. As you can see, we're down here at the bottom of the ocean. So that's HARP firing its signal around to the other side of the world. Uh, also in the section, all of the ionospheric heaters of the world, missile defense radars, um, which is pretty interesting, Russian woodpecker, Antarctic bases, aerosol robotic network, aeronet, and a whole lot more. Um, extremely low frequency uh, emitter transmission sites, joint surveillance system air route um, radars, uh the list goes on and on middle atmospheric radars and meteor wind radars um just tons of crazy crap super darn uh let's see did i turn on the laser beams where's the laser beams at i passed them directed energy weapons directed energy here all right and this is what we end up with that's a lot of stuff so these are the space fence north warning system down here, we've got them all the way across the lower U.S. These are called Navaspasur. That's the, the original space fence. Um, off B over here at Two Lake Air Force Base. Um, Gwen stations are in black. VLF stations um, have the little VLF signal on them. The ELF um, Project Sanguine at Clam Lake, Wisconsin, and the other one right over here at Republic, Michigan. The F you see here is F for FU. That's how long it is. Um, that's in miles. So as you can see here, five kilometers, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 kilometers long. Um, that thing is huge. This is the predecessor to HARP, is these two right here. Um, creating extremely low frequency waves. It was known for the Taos hum. Um, it, it would cause a humming in people's ears. Uh, no longer operational. The, the big daddies over here at uh, NAUU are uh, right here, I believe. Let's see if that's one of them. On some of these, I've actually put the antennas up as well. As you can see, this is uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. So I missed the mark. Let's zoom back out. Where is it? It's this one right here. This is the new big one. And it's at Cutler, Maine. And as you can see, it has quite a few antennas. And that's how tall they are this one is at two almost two million watts so very powerful stuff indeed see it in 3d fly around take a look at all of the vlf and elf sites around the globe um this is my pink and purple passion for those who don't know i mapped all of this section out myself you got laser beams from around the world they're the little yellow icons all of these have photos um, you got gravitational wave detectors like Virgo, LIGO, 
Um, they've got this funky icon right here, LIGO at Livingston, LIGO at Hanford. That's what the facility looks like. And uh, Super Darns are in yellow. This is the one at Fort Hayes, Virginia Tech. Um, and they're all over Canada, as you can see here. No images available on a lot of those, but this is what they look like. Uh, just a series of antennas. We've all seen them before. And the list goes on and on and on. So dig into that, guys. Um, lots of radars to look at. Down here, we've got the Jorn Gently Operational Radar Network, Jorn Defense Receiver Site. And that's the transmitter next to it. Transmitter receiver, as you see here. Um, and this is the one that everybody always talks about, a Harold Holt. Looks like a Star of David. It's not an ionospheric heater. It's an ELF trans, a VLF transmission site at 2 million watts at uh, 19,800 hertz or 19 kilohertz. But you can see that in 3D as well. I have a lot of fun mapping out these. If there's a radar that's not on my list or an ELF VLF site, please let me know. I will put it on the list and map it out. All right, so that's my favorite section. As you can see, I put a lot of work in there. There's 34 maps in there. Climate change and energy has things like the Bayou Corn Sinkhole, worst oil spills in history, coal ash ponds. A lot of people talking about coal ash. You want to see all the ponds. There they are. Um, fracking America, all of, you know, fracking chemical database. Fracking and drinking water, um, fracking chemicals actually found in people's water, methane released uh, due to fugitive emissions, and map of environmental disasters, shale gas basins, the list goes on and on there. Geoengineering and weather modification, of course I added HARP and the ionospheric heaters to that as well. NOAA reported weather modification activities and cloud seeding generators all over America. And the list goes on. We have government and surveillance. This is where you can actually see the spy facilities of the world like I showed earlier. And all the undersea cables. And all the drones. And the uh, all the immigrants that have been brought to these cages and separated from their families. Um, this actually started under Obama. It was called Relocations of Unaccompanied Im Immigrant Minors, um, where they actually take the kids and find housing for them and you know stash them all over America, and Department of Homeland Security Fusion Centers. So let's get rid of the HARP stuff for now. I'm going to close those out. Radio telescope, super darn, direct energy. And what we're left it with is... The deep state so this is what you know spying on american citizens and citizens abroad looks like our internet runs on cables underneath the ocean the cables connect to nsa facilities um military operations facilities they look like this i went and i found i find photos of them very hard to find photos of many of these facilities as you can imagine um pretty fun stuff indeed tracking all of this down um so take a look at that this is a uh, over in, in uh, gchq this is where the dirty dossier originated <laughs> um and the revolving door basically is if america wants to spy on american citizens they get the uk to do it and if the uk wants to spy on its citizens they get america to do it all of this is connected together through something called the Stone Ghost Network. It is the Five Eyes, also known as Australia, New Zealand, Canada, US, UK. Oz Can Zuckus. Um, but these are all the different NSA facilities, aerospace data facility, east and west. Um, you know, the Sugar Grove Station. You can go through all of these. This is the Fort Gordon Regional Security Operations Center for the NSA. Um, and these are pretty pretty accurate maps. You actually go down to the ground, you'll see that, you know, I actually put the dot right on top of the, the facility. I'm pretty, pretty.
pretty particular about that sort of thing. Also known as the Georgia Cryptological Center, it's in the same area, clearly. But regardless, that's the deep state. That's the spying on you part of things. And then under drones, you got know your drones right here. If you were to click on that, what kind of angle is that? That's very weird. You can actually see all the different types of drones. I mapped them out. Um, and these come from FOIAs. They show all of the drones around America that are in use by police officials, universities, all that sort of thing. And like I said, each and every single one of these has its own website, you know, page. If you're to click on the little Afro icon information, you go to UAV Drones Over America. And you scroll down, you can see the sources for these maps. Um, and you can see right there. EFF map. Uh, map of domestic drone flights. FAA releases thousands of pages on drone records. U.S. Air Force drone map, PDF, and mirror. And this is the U.S. Air Force's drones all over America. I map them out. Um, and of course, like I said earlier, all of the different drones. So there is now um, 512 pages on Climate Viewer 3D. Wrong button and lots of stuff to dig into zoom out for me zoom out for me why you don't want to reset i don't like you but anyway so there is your your deep state um fun stuff closing that closing that trashing everything coming back here and back to the top, privacy, we're on that. And then nuclear radiation and waste. We've got the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear meltdown. We got the Chernobyl meltdown. Um, 10 most radioactive places on Earth. And every nuclear reactor on the planet, as you can see here. So each one of these has a photo associated with it as well, plus information. So you can feel free to dig into that. Lots of stuff to look at. There are literally thousands of hours worth of information just on this single page, um, plus real-time information. Um, link to live site for super darn please, Jim. Um, I can get I can get information on that. What I really want to get information, Harry, on is um, is that I'd like to get. Um, real-time monitoring on all of the major stations but in order to do that we need web SDR or um, some kind of magnetometers around the area I'm looking forward to doing that in the future but I want real-time information on all this stuff so if anybody would like to participate in this project I've done all of this myself for free in my spare time um, that'd be greatly appreciated but being able to link to each super darn and getting real-time information on when it's on when it's off would be pretty tough <laughs> um, to say the least each one is independently operated um, and same is true with each of the ionospheric heaters um, knowing when they're on and off would probably be best uh, handled by you know, uh, like I said, web SDR, which is a way to monitor frequencies. Um, ham radio operators use it. Um, all of that's in my to-do list, but you know, one man can only do so much in so little time. So eventually we'll probably have that. I hope to build a climate viewer that you can put in your backyard to monitor frequencies in your own local area. And that would be great. Let's bring that up. What you got? Real time data. My ninja. We'll, uh, we'll see what we can do with that. All right. So this does not move. And okay. 
I will play with this. Let me bookmark this real quick. Dun, 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 dun. But yeah, I've got that information on my super darn page. Um, actually, I just don't have it linked live to the um, to the actual super darn stuff. So if you see, I, I'll show you real quick. Go back up here to atmospheric sensor sites and go to oh. There's a search button right here. I can type in super darn and it'll actually just bring that up. So if you go over here to super dual aurora radar network, um, you'll see that I've got the John Hopkins applied physics lab, Virginia tech, super darn site, Cedar web, uh, ground based instruments and, um, a paper on that. So this is that site that you linked me to isn't it super darn dud yeah same site so yeah I, I do have that linked on there dude it's just in the details tell you bro i got i got i, I got you bro i didn't even show any of that let me go, go show so what i was showing was um this is the super darn page the information on where i got this from and i've got the john hopkins applied physics lab um right here and the virginia tech super darn site there's the john hopkins that's the one that you linked me to and there's the real html re real-time display which is what you were showing me um i do have that on climate viewer 3d um also the virginia tech um site which i believe is an archive.org um version because they've now taken it down but this is the original Virginia Tech um, page for it, which also links to share the Southern Hemisphere radar experiment, wiki pages, and all that. The Cedar Web uh, ground based instruments, which documents every single one of these instruments around the globe. As you can see here, coherent in ionospheric radars. These are your super darns right here. These are where I got a lot of this information from. They have coordinates, but the coordinates are wrong. Actually finding them in Google Earth was very tough. So I actually took the coordinates, put it into Google Earth, then went and searched, you know, the area and found the actual radars and put the dots on top of them. So you got to start somewhere. And in case you guys don't know, this is by N or UCAR. NCAR and UCAR are the um, you know preeminent website for, or company for atmospheric modification worldwide, University Corporation for Atmospheric Research. Um, so yeah, there's that. But I do appreciate you, Harry. I did I did have that on there, but displaying it in real time on the map itself would be quite a feat indeed. All right, so, you know, I, I showed you the nuclear section. Um, North Korean nuclear missile test collapse, mountain collapse. Lots of stuff to choose through there. Um, and then finally, transportation, which has things like train wrecks, plane wrecks, sunken ships, flight routes in the United States, ship tracks, ship routes, and stuff like that. U.S. ports, major air runways, ICAO flight navigation aids, all that sort of stuff. And the final section is history and science. Um, that's where some of this stuff comes from. This is all of George Stiller's maps from myreadingmapped.com. Google deleted his website and all of his maps. And I mirrored them over here. We've become good friends since then. Um, and I haven't completed his section, um, altogether he has 160 maps. I think I've probably put 80 of them up there, but you can see things like cities of the dead, ghost towns of Asia, ghost towns of America, um, ancient ruins from all over the world, architecture, like the Antarctic, um, research bases, space centers, um, and launch sites. Conquers and wars like World War II battles, American Civil War Part 1 and Part 2, um, colored coded by year, every single battle, uh, the American Revolution, every single battle. I mean, his stuff is priceless. Disease outbreaks like 
Middle East respiratory syndrome, the, the spread of Ebola outbreaks worldwide, 1976 to 2015, um, explorers, you know, like Charles Darwin, the Lewis and Clark expedition, Marco Polo, um, just tons of really freaking cool maps, stuff you're not going to find anywhere else. Uh, the rise and fall and migration of civilization, civilization due to climate change over the centuries. Um, plane cr crash sites, there's actually 10 maps in this section. I've only put one of them up so far. Train crash sites, um, put those up there, World Fairs and Olympics. There's going to be many more maps added to this section. I have not completed it, but now I've really taken you through the entire thing. Back to show all. And like I said, you know, you can use the search button right up here. If I start typing in HARP, I get North Korean uh, nuclear test mountain collapse because it's related to HARP and the high frequency active rural research program. If I type in rocket, I get all of these. If I type in ELF, I get a whole lot of stuff now instead of just what I expected. Let's type in VLF. Extremely low frequency, ULF, ELF, VLF. So you can actually search through the map list, um, clear it, clear it back out. It'll show them all, and that's how it works, guys. So this is the new Climate Viewer 3D. I'm super stoked about it, super proud. Hope you guys will check it out. Um, hit me up on the about page. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. Um, if you find anything broken, feel free to email me. Um, and, you know, please continue to support my work. Um, Patreon, PayPal, GoFundMe. If you guys are concerned about your privacy while using the live layers, I, exp um, I endorse ExpressVPN. I am currently on ExpressVPN. As I'm doing this live broadcast, as you can see, virtual private network is on. Um, so this actually encrypts my information coming from my internet service provider out to the internet and out to you right now. Um, Facebook can't see my original IP. Um, my internet service provider can't either. Nobody can see what I'm doing online. In fact, ExpressVPN has a no log policy. So even if the government wanted to know what I was doing while I was on my VPN, they have no logs at all. So there is no way to actually get that back. So if you're concerned that you're going to be on Climate Viewer 3D and you're going to click on one of these live layers and, you know, all of these are linked to, you know, like the USGS. So that's a government website, you know. Hey, I don't want the government tracking me while I'm doing this. Get ExpressVPN and they'll never know it was you. Never be able to tell that you were ever there. So that's why I support that as well. Um, you know, check out Climate Viewer 3D. Check out Climate Viewer Mobile. Same deal. Lighter on the browser. Uh, works faster on phones. Um, you know, if it's if if you don't have 3D support on your device, use the mobile version. Um, some of the maps are, are specific to Climate Viewer 3D, um, and you're not going to be able to find them on the mobile. And that's just unfortunate, you know. But that's just the way it is. Um, a good example would be under ancient ruins. If you go and you look at this one, pyramids of the world. Yeah, it's a very 3D related map, as you can see, and it shows uh, you know how many of the um, pyramids of the world are lined up on certain axes, axes, or axes. Um, and this was based on something called the Revelation of the Pyramids, as you can see right here. Um, if you go to the page for it, you will not be able to flip to 2D mode. It'll say available only in 3D. And at the bottom, I've got the documentation on that. The Revelation of the Pyramids documentary that was related to the making of this map, uh, which I mentioned in Christopher Fontenot's a microwave planet the other day we were talking about this very subject um there it is uh chris there's the actual map in 3d 
of all of those facilities and as you can see it is very accurate you can come down here and there they are so not making this stuff up pretty darn accurate there's a lot of pyramids around the world and uh, most people don't know about them check it out but that's a 3d only map so not everything is available on cloud viewer mobile but darn near everything is um, if you want to just go and browse each of the individual map pages, you can do that through the site map. Like I said, just hit the sections. Um, very easy to go through now. And this will make it to where Google and Bing and all these will finally be able to see all of the maps that are on here, which is another reason I put all this work into it. So i'm going to be tracking uh this hurricane coming up i'm pretty concerned about it it's headed my way and i'm going to do all of that in this alerts uh and live weather category section um let's pray that this little bad boy does not come my way because i certainly don't want to deal with it but so far it looks like it's headed right for me and i'm not too stoked about it uh don't like dealing with hurricanes but i like to know and knowing is half the battle so you can know too just by simply trying climate viewer 3d please share it with your friends uh, not a lot of people know about this website it's uh one of the internet's best kept secrets uh, i got three uh you know tropical storms on the way right now that i'm tracking and We'll keep you abreast of that, and it won't be a long video like this one, but, you know, hey, after three months of creating this thing, I had to go a little long on this video and uh, kind of show it off. So, guys, I love you, mean it. I hope that you will share climateviewer.org. I hope that you will try it yourself. I hope that you will dig into it. There's a lot to learn there, um, a lot of stuff that's not available anywhere else on the internet, like the Ionosphere Keter map, like the spy facility maps. Um, I sent the spy facility map to um, Glenn Greenwald right after the Snowden thing, and I was like, look, dude, I mapped this out three years before Snowden ever said the first word. Um, share this map. He was he would not share it. I sent the NSA map to Infowars and Alex Jones. They were like, mm, we don't want to touch that. Um, so there's a lot of information on climateviewer.org that you're not going to find anywhere else. And, you know, I'm doing this for you guys um, free of charge. I hope that you will show me some love by continuing to support my work. Harry, I know we've got the equipment to do it, bro. I want to track this stuff live in real time. That's what this is all about. The Environmental Modification Accountability Act and building sensors to catch people screwing with the weather. And if those, you know, those of you who don't know and haven't been to weathermodificationhistory.com, please check it out. It's the 200-year history of weather modification and all the technologies that they have today at their dispersal um to, to modify the weather and that's why i proposed something called the environmental modification accountability act um to bring some transparency to all of this sort of thing and uh that way more people will know about you know the history of weather control and that hurricanes storms all this stuff is manipulated and you can go through that entire history in chronological format right there on weathermodificationhistory.com so please check that one out as well it's a it's an eyeful it's got information you're not going to see anywhere else on the internet um but yeah harry that's exactly what we're trying to do here man we got to be able to track these um these emf sites so that we can see when they're they're zapping and frying the you know ionizing trying to steer hurricanes um it is a concern and we will definitely be doing something about it uh that was the whole purpose of building climate viewer 3d was to map out all the facilities that can uh, modify the weather have something to do with monitoring the weather 
And, uh, you know, obviously anything that can impact your health, like nuclear radiation, fracking wells, drilling, uh, you know, coal factories, all that stuff. All right, so boy, this turned into a long video. Guys, I love you, mean it. I hope you'll continue to support my work. I'm feeling better by the day, and um, I'm going to continue to focus on my health. And uh, I'm so glad that after three months, this website's finally live. It's at climateviewer.org. Um, please share it with your friends. Try it yourself. Dig in. Send your comments, suggestions, criticisms, bugs my way. Join the chat. The chat's available in the external links section. It's also on climateviewer.com. But join the chat. Let me know. Um, send me an email, jim at climateviewer.com. If you see something funky, it's going to be different on some browsers. Maybe it won't work so well on yours. If you're having issues, let me know. I'm always trying to improve this thing um, because I want it to work for everybody so that we have the same tools that the government has that, you know, that we all have, you know, the Triforce power to, you know, see what's going on in the world at any given time and know in an instant without having to go to 35 websites. So thank you for watching this video. I appreciate all of my supporters, everybody who sent me love and uh, prayers about you know my thyroid condition that I've been dealing with. It is improving um, and I'm so glad that this website's finally live. So guys, with information comes power and with power comes great responsibility. So please remember to use the information on climateviewer.org to attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.